Shame I advise you the live stream started, so if you want to start the meeting. Still muted, Colin. You're on mute. Colin. That might help. <laughs> Good evening. And welcome to East Devon District Council's virtual scrutiny meeting on the 5th of November 2020. I am your chair, Councillor Colin Brown. I would like to welcome anyone watching the meeting via the live streaming. <coughs> All participants here today are taking part remotely and as well as being live streamed, the meeting is being recorded. So please bear this in mind throughout and may I remind you to be careful with your language. May I also remind members that the code of conduct applies throughout this meeting. We also reserve the right to remove and disconnect any participant who is disrupting the meeting by whatever means. Please turn any telephone devices off or to silence. As this scrutiny meeting is dependent on internet connection and a power supply, in the event of a break in the internet connection or power cut, bear, bear, bear with us as we try to reconnect. After 50 minutes, if we are not able to reconnect, we will consider the meeting adjourned and reconvene at a later date. Please check the committee pages on the website for details. Please make sure all microphones are muted when you are not speaking and to avoid any background noise levels. Keep points short and do not repeat points that have already been made and do not interrupt. If you wish to comment, please raise your electronic blue hand and wait to be called. I would like to remind members not to carry on talking at the start or end of a meeting or the comments will be heard on the live recording. All councillors have been sent the agenda for today's meeting. All members of the public who want to view the agenda can do so by visiting our website, www.eastdevon.gov.uk. I will now start the meeting by doing a roll call of committee members here present. Can you please now unmute your microphones and when you hear your name, please confirm by saying present. When you have confirmed you are present, please mute your microphone again. Councillor Brown. Present. Councillor Ranger. Present. Councillor Chapman. Present. Councillor Coleman. Present. Councillor Chubb. Present. Councillor Davy. Present. And I must apologise for not being here last time. I'd completely forgotten I'd been appointed to this committee, so that's why I was a no-show. Sorry about that. Councillor Hawkins. Present. Councillor Johns. Councillor King. Present. Councillor McCullum. Present. Councillor Parr. Present. Councillor Reliance. Councillor Pepper. Councillor Lawrence just joining us. Councillor Pepper. Councillor Taylor. Present. Councillor uh, Chris Wright. Present. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. I can confirm we are correct today. Thank you. Um, uh, Pardon me, Chris, you didn't mention my name, but I'm present. It's members of, the committee. Of, members of the committee. I've, I've made a note of you as an also present. Yeah, not, not, not councillors, but councillors on the committee we, we were going through. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can confirm we are core at today. Um, Public speaking. I don't think there's any public speakers today, is there? No, Chairman, there are no public speakers. Thank you. Um, minutes of the last meeting, agenda item two. 
Um, if any anyone has a comment on the, on the minutes from September the 10th, 2020, please do this by raising your blue hand. If no blue hands are raised, I will take this in the indication that you all agree the minutes of the previous meeting. Can't find the blue hands. Right, there's no blue hand, so I take it the minutes are agreed. Item three, apologies. Uh, no apologies, Chairman. Thank you. Declaration of interest. Uh, we will do this by roll call. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Brown. None. Councillor Ranger. None. Councillor Chapman. None. Councillor Coleman. None. Councillor Chubb. Devon County Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Davey. Um, Exmouth Town Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Hawkins. None. Thank you. Councillor John's not here. Councillor King. None. Thank you. Councillor McCollum. None. Thank you. Councillor Parr. None. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rylance. None that I'm aware of, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Peppers, not here. Councillor Taylor. None. Thank you, and Councillor Chris Wright, not here. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, matters of urgency, there are none. That's item five. Item six, confidential and exempt items. There are no confidential and exempt items which officers recommend should be dealt with in this way. Uh, agenda item seven, matters for decision. Um, decision is made by cabinet called in by members for scrutiny in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedure rules. There are no such items. Um, agenda item eight, requesting portfolio holders reports. Um, in the past, we've had up to date reports from portfolio holders. I mean, we've had none in the past 12 months or so. I think it's something we should start doing again. Um, and I know the portfolio holders haven't been in their position very long, so we're not expecting too much. But we have got two portfolio holders who have been in there for more than 12 months, which is uh, Megan and um, Megan Armstrong and Councillor Jeff Young. Um, you know, I think we could start calling them along one at the time. Um, and perhaps if we could start off with Megan, I don't know what um, people think, but um, if we can have a slight discussion on that before we agree that position. Is there any councillors that would like to speak on this? If you'd like to do so, raise your blue hand in the normal way. Right, I can see three blue hands raised. Um, uh, Councillor Bruce Tassarum. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I think that's a very splendid idea. Um, and I think, well, when you refer to Councillor Armstrong, she's currently, as you, as members are aware, working on the poverty working panel. So whilst we mustn't, obviously, as a scrutiny committee, prejudge the recommendations or outcome of that panel, um, I think that perhaps uh, that's something that she's working on. So I'm not sure whether Councillor Jung should be called first or, or, or her, because obviously Councillor Jung has an equally large and important portfolio. So I think the committee tonight needs to determine what, what which particular you know portfolio holders we need to call in what order and obviously we don't want to cross over with working parties that have already been set up so that was my thoughts on that chair thank you thank you i can see no other raised hands from councillors only from the committee um so if we go to the committee um councillor ellen Powell, first one i can see yes thank you i I think this is um, a very important role that we should be pursuing. And I um, 
don't see any objection to calling Councillor Armstrong um, first, but I have no particular um, wish which portfolio holder comes first, but certainly I think we should all be up to date with what portfolio holders are doing. I think, um, yes, let's, let's do this. Thank you. Um, Councillor Holly Davy. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I think that's a, a very good idea. And um, I fully support uh, starting with Councillor Armstrong because I think the housing is very much an issue at the moment during times of COVID. And also, having just heard the Prime Minister announcing extra funding to get rough sleepers off the streets, um, it would be good to know what's being done uh, in those circumstances. So I think that would be very timely. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's really important that we are kept up to date with what's going on. And there's so much happening just at the moment, like today with the um, the training that we, we had for, um, you know, the housing allocations. And um, it's, there's so much useful stuff going on that we really need to be updated with it and kept informed. And this is the only way, really. So I agree with Ol with Ollie. Thank you. Can you hear me? Thank you. Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Thank you. Yes. Um, okay. Did you yeah, hear me? Yeah, we did. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. Um, Councillor Hawkins. Uh, thanks. The only um, other one to add into the mix, I think, is Councillor Bailey, who's been portfolio holder just as long. Um, I'm just thinking our portfolio includes COVID-19 response and recovery. Yeah. So that might be just as timely as uh, the other ones at the moment. Yeah. All right. We'll add him to the list then. Thank you. Um, we got, um, Councillor Ranger. Thank you. So I just really wanted to clarify. So, um, so are we saying that um, at every meeting um, we're going to get, um, or we're suggesting that we get an update from portfolio holders? That's my first question. And are we suggesting that we get um, an update from every portfolio holder? And um, will, will that be a written report in advance? Or is it always going to be a verbal report at the meeting? I was only thinking some meetings are meatier than others. Um, and if at every meeting we're having a verbal report that we haven't seen in advance, um, you know, if we've got sort of um, larger items on the agenda than, than we have tonight, um, that, that would be quite some meeting if, if we're having verbal reports from portfolio holders that we haven't had um, sight of previously. Um, that's, I'm just putting that out. So I think it's a good idea to have updates from portfolio holders. But I was just wondering about going forward, what format that would be in. Well, they can make a written report, which we can all see, and then they can come along to the meeting and we will ask some questions from their reports. If that's agreeable by everybody. Um, Councillor Chapman. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I, I would like to hear from Councillor Armstrong uh, I am on her uh, poverty um, committee, um, but the fact we've gone back into lockdown um, and the officers couldn't give us a report on the uh, increase of domestic violence that the police are monitoring um, and also the child helpline. Um, I would just like to know so that council could um, sort of make decisions when government money comes down um, if we can support I know it's not under East Devon um, District Council um, but um, as a council we can support uh, County Council um, in their work here um, I'm just a bit concerned that they might have run out of shelter housing for um, victims of violence. Um, and I know Councillor Armstrong um, was very keen on this, was going to follow it up. 
So I think it would be nice to know, and then we could recommend to Cabinet that if support is needed, that East Devon could actually help. Um, obviously, I can't think of anything worse than uh, being locked up with someone who is violent towards you. Thank yeah. you, Chair. Thank you. And the final speaker I can see is uh, Councillor King. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a simple question from a simple person who hasn't uh, heard these councillor reports and scrutiny before. Um, is it an open, uh, open book as to what they talk about? report on, um, because uh, it's a bit of a pig in the poke. We, we may not actually have uh, details on matters which an individual on this uh, committee is interested in or is expecting. Uh, and I'd note that uh, both um, with, uh, well, definitely with um, Megan Armstrong, Councillor Armstrong, uh, people have been quite specific as what they, it is, what it is that they would expect of her. Is there some way of, of um, coming in uh, with, I'm sorry, my dog has just come in the room. Is there, is there some way of um, uh, zeroing in what is required of them if we know beforehand what, what is uh, an agenda item that we'd like to hear about? Well, if, um, as suggested by Councillor Ranger, they will make a report out which we'll all have the opportunity to read and then we can go back and pick up on specific parts within the report they've made out. Right, I can't see any other blue hands raised. Um, we need a proposer and a seconder for that. Is there a proposer and a seconder? So, Councillor yep. Yes, Chairman. I'll yep. propose. And, and I'll second. Thank you. Second, would you like? Chair, I think we're struggling to hear you. We're struggling to hear you. I'm, I'm assuming everybody else is, is hearing the same thing. Yeah, it's not my end. Um, Councillor Ranger, are you in a position just to pick that up? So, so, so we just confirm then. So, um, well, it's this, up, it? that doesn't seem to work. A second. This was proposed by is that, is Council, Councillor Helen Palmer and seconded by Fabian King. By <laughs> Chair, we you're you're very broken up. I think and Councillor Ranger's just it, in a position to take over for a minute. Uh, Councillor Tony McCullum, is that right? Oh, and a minute. My inter Okay. Right, that's fine. So um Right, so shall we, so um, proposed then by um, Councillor Parr, seconded by Councillor King. So um, is everybody um, please like to vote um, with a show um, using either the green tick or the red cross? Those watching online, the voting is taking place. Vice Chair, that's 12 green ticks and no red crosses. Thank you. So um, the next item on the agenda then um, is the scrutiny um, forward work plan. So um, we have had some um, proposal forms received. And the first form, uh, the first proposal was on um, the standards committee and subcommittee issues referred from the chairman of audit and governance. And uh, I'm back now, Val. 
Okay. All right. Sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. Uh, I said my internet was going down earlier on, didn't I? <laughs> um, item second, yes. Um, to discuss proposal um, proposal forms received from myself on the standard subcommittee, um, who issued a, a referral by the chairman of the audit and governance and the portfolio order for governance and transparency. Um, to review um, a governance. So, uh, it's throwing me my internet going down now. Um, um, and I think, you know, Sam Hawkins sent it over to me, or Councillor Sam Hawkins sent it over to me for us to review because he thought it would be better being reviewed by scrutiny than it was by their committees um, and I think we should look at this um, review and um, see the seven principles of public life which are um, integrity, objectivity, selfishness, accountability, openness, honesty and leadership and review that but add into it uh, DBS checks under openness. Um, just see what other members think of that. So if we go to council members first, if they would like to speak and raise their blue hands accordingly. Um, we've got Councillor Andrew Moulding. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm very much aware, as I'm sure uh, most members are, that uh, uh, business in the scrutiny committee is fairly light at the moment. And, uh, and I see that there should be opportunities for scrutiny to uh, do its job in scrutinizing the work of the uh, district council. And as far as uh, standards committee is concerned, fair enough, this um, uh, report seems to suggest that the um, standards uh, process should be considered by the standards committee themselves. Now, for me, the reason for having a scrutiny committee is so that the scrutiny committee can look objectively at matters of the council carried out by, by uh, members of the council and indeed by officers to ensure that these uh, um, issues are considered properly. Now, it's all well and good for a report to go to standards, but I don't think standards meet probably until, what is it, January, something like that. And my thoughts are that with the uh, business levels in scrutiny at the moment, it would be very useful for standards to have an objective report from scrutiny prior to when they meet in probably January. And that's a suggestion, uh, Chair. Thank you. Um... Um, councillors, we'll we're take the councillors first. So it's uh, Councillor Mike Allen is the next one on the list. Thank you, Chair. Um, the Standards Committee uh, minutes from October, uh, point four says there should be stakeholder a great engagement on the appropriateness of the Code of Conduct. And obviously, uh, there are other issues that have been subject to complaint in terms of procedures. The um, recommendation, therefore, is that a standards committee review a procedure of uh, the complaints procedure and of the actual code itself is very timely and there is a, uh, a review going on through the LGA at the same time, which we should respond to. And all of these things are best done by uh, a scrutiny committee review. We are, after all, stakeholders. And I think of all the people that ought to have an independent and impartial view of the standards committee procedures, it should be uh, the scrutiny committee looking at it very carefully and impartially 
and making sure that the Standards Committee has no political imbalances in it. And it's uh, stated by the Standards Committee that they can manage conflicts of interest. Um, I'm not sure if the recent situation with um, Councillor Miller's review is actually in that category of being able to manage conflicts of interest. Um, there are also conflicts of interest arising from complaints against certain town councillors by certain district councillors. And that needs very careful handling and very careful scrutiny to see whether or not any complaints are vexatious or are in fact politically motivated and part of a political campaign. And what should the procedures be in those circumstances? The uh, situation is, as far as I know, for the last decade, we haven't had a scrutiny review of standards. And it is very timely to have this review right now. If this council wants to keep to its attitude and commitment to transparency, this is the right committee to review the whole standards process openly, fairly and in public. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Right, I'm, I'm taking uh, councillors first, not, not people on the committee. So the next speaker is um, Councillor Paul Arnott. Thank you, Chair, very much. Um, I'll just say very briefly, um, for the record, I don't agree with what Councillor Allen's just said about the most recent Standards Committee. I don't think there's any basis for that, and I don't suggest that should be discussed further. Um, but I would agree with him in every other respect. Um, I've been wanting the standards processes at this Council, other Councils as well, but this council in, in this case, obviously, um, to be uh, vastly improved for about, I don't know, 10, 12 years now. Um, I think there is a risk that there is a, there is a random element about which, um, which complaints move forward for eventual investigation. Mm -hmm. I think there is a, an issue about the resources that get put into them. The question that becomes, and so I think it is incredibly important, and there are some major issues, and there are some major staffing issues, you know, what are we going to do? Do we have, um, do we have, which is, I, I believe, an item that the Standards Committee was going to consider itself, do we have somebody external who assesses the complaints in the first place? In other words, that we don't just put the whole thing, the whole burden on the shoulders of the monitoring officer who inevitably finds her or himself in a very difficult position because they are um, they are answerable and have relationships with both members and with officers and some members more strongly than others. It's very, very difficult uh, and it puts the, the monitoring officer in a very difficult position. But I suspect what the monitoring officer may say in a minute is you need to find a really strong reason why you're hauling this out of the Standards Committee itself, which is under our constitution, the entity that's meant to be dealing with it, um, and bringing it into scrutiny. Uh, so I, I really support the principle, hugely support the principle of totally overhauling the way we look at standards. I'm not sure it's legitimate to take it through scrutiny, but you know, if, if it is, so be it. The other thing I'd say, it's just a comment you made, Chair, uh, a little while ago about DBS. Um, be careful what you wish for there. Um, you will have seen reported in the last week a case of a former district councillor, and I will say no more. But that person and the allegations against them um, would have would have not had any there would have been no benefit of a dbs in those particular allegations thank you thank you 
I mean, th this was bought before scrutiny in, in answer to um, Councillor Arnott. This was bought to, to scrutiny by, you know, the, the two, uh, by, by a portfolio holder and by um, 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 Sam Hawkins, who is, is chair of Overview, Overview and Governance. Right. Um, why other councillors want to speak? Um, uh, Bruce Desarum. Yeah, Bruce thank you, Chair. I, I think it's it's very important, as it says on the documents, that the the uh, the complaints are investigated by an independent investigator. And I think we need to ascertain, as a committee, a scrutiny committee, uh, what is the function of the investi independent investigator? Uh, will, as Councillor Arnott said, the external uh, person get involved? And will the person, obviously, at the moment they do have, is there a form of right or reply um, so that they can see the process has been carried out in an independent and effective manner, and they've had the, the correct opportunity? to support themselves throughout this process uh, with a perhaps a proper representation rather like they do in workplace trade 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 union matters where there is a workplace accredited representative who attends the meeting and puts forward that person's case to the management team and obviously then the decision is reached so i think it's about making the process better for those people who unfortunately I mean, let's put it this way members i don't think it's a success when we have to use the standards process, because it's a failing from ourselves as, as a community of councillors and members, you know, for the members, if we've, if we've had to go down the standards route, I don't think it's something that's positive that should have happened. So thank, thank you, Chair, for your, your indulgence. Thank you. Um, that's all the councillors that are not on committee. I've got a hand raised by um, Henry Gordon Lennox, but I don't know whether he's on this committee or a councillor or what, he's, um, what he wants to say. So. We'll give him an opportunity to see what um, what he wants. Henry Gordon Lennox. Thank you, Chair. So um, I, I'm here because it's my comments that are on the form. Right. I, I thought it wise to be here so that I can just impart the rationale that sits behind it and and to help the committee fundamentally. Um, it's fair to say that there has been a lot of disquiet with with the process uh, uh, and elements of it um, of late and, and and not just of late you know outside of the council there have been um, criticisms um, for, for quite some time I understand that uh, you know I don't want to go into too much detail and, and, and I don't want to go into too much detail in the sense that there's a lot of issues that are raised um, but I, I, if I can perhaps just try and address some of them so that you can have a, a, a have it in mind as you're going on to discussion. I mean, obviously, the Localism Act requires the council to adopt a particular process or procedure, which it has, which is what we have. And the council has, de has delegated that responsibility in terms of appraising and recommending to council to the Standards Committee. Now, the reason I've said on the form that there's an element of duplication of work is it's not that scrutiny can't look at, 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 at the um, standards process or, or elements of it. And I'm not suggesting that. But what, what you're going to end up with here is, is duplication between standards, who is undertaking a review of the procedures and the processes, including the size of the membership of the committees. Um, and it's in train. And the, I've been tasked with, with writing the report, um, particularly on the su uh, assessment subcommittee, which I'll come back to, and, and therein the ongoing issues as to, as to staffing of, of um, not staffing, sorry, uh, the number of members and then also staffing issues and all the rest of it. And all, I, all I'm highlighting really is that, you know, scrutiny, scrutiny would effectively be duplicating the work that is, that is being undertaken within standards currently. And there is nothing to stop any member of the council attending the standards committee um, and having uh, um, uh, or, or engaging in the process and, and, and passing on uh, councillors' views so that the standards committee can hear it and, and it can take on board that as part of this discussion. But yeah, please don't accept, don't, please don't think I'm saying that scrutiny can't look at this. My, my, my issue particularly with it is going to be timing. I know what Councillor Moulding has said about this uh, being dealt with before the next standards meeting. All I would say is that the next scrutiny meeting is the 10th of December. If the committee take this forward from proposal, it's going to have to come back to the next meeting uh, with the scoping form. And then the next meeting for scrutiny after that's February. So you're going to miss the next standards meeting anyway. Um, but I think it's important you're going to go through scoping because you've raised a lot of issues and from my point of view, and bear in mind, I'll be the one writing the report. You're, you're asking for a significant amount of involved information to be provided 
to, to, to address some of the concerns that are being raised, not least if there are political motivations for it. For that, you're gonna to have to have a whole host of information. Bear in mind also that you can't have a lot of information because data protection or confidentiality. Um, so I, I, I think you're gonna to have to do quite a lot of work about the scoping of actually what you want to get into and the benefits it's gonna derive um, in the context of also what standards is doing. So that's that's the sort of the overarching view, if, if, I, if I can say that. Um, I, I ought to just correct one thing that Councillor Arnold said. Uh, it's not as the, the Standards Committee was not looking at an independent uh, um, assessment first up. What it was suggesting was a, there is a subcommittee from standards that will carry out the initial assessment rather than, rather than effectively me sitting at first tier. So a, a, a councillor appointed subcommittee will will determine whether or not complaints go forward or not they then go if they do they then go to investigation and so on and so forth so it's a councillor-led approach which is what the report to standards was was talking about and that's the sort of the premise going forward um, and uh, i mean fundamentally it's difficult to see how else you will deal with standards other than in a political environment politically uh, sorry the standards committee is politically balanced um, increasing the size yes you increase the number of members and you increase the span possibly but fundamentally it is councillors who are and i know the expression gets used a lot doesn't it but marking your own homework then that it will be councillors judging um and, and that, if that's what the council want that's absolutely fine there's no problem but as i say for me this is an issue that is currently with standards they are looking at it actively they are looking at whether the process is effective whether it should change and for me i, I i'm just and from a purely personal point of view the practicalities of preparing something meaningful for scrutiny in any meaningful time frame as well uh, concerns me so that's my tuppence worth thank you chair thank you thank you i mean henry it makes it sounds like you don't want the work the way you put that across but there we are um i mean all we can do is a screw always eager today. for work chair <laughs> All, all we can do is a scrutiny and scrutiny is make recommendations to council. We can't enforce anything on council. We just make recommendations. Yes, um, you're absolutely right. I mean, fundamentally, though, scru scrutiny is really, uh, I say really, it's to hold the executive to account fundamentally. And yet standards is sitting out with the standards committee. So it's a slightly yeah. odd scenario. But I, you know, I accept absolutely that, that scrutiny has the ability to ask. And, you know, I can understand there will be certain aspects, but, you know, the way the form is written and, and hearing councillors talk, you know, you are, you are asking for a complete review of the entirety of the standards process, the last however long of cases. And, and, and frankly, that is going to take me weeks of work just to deliver that. And in, in the time frame that's available, if you want it to be ahead of, of a standard, I'm afraid it's just impractical from my workload point of view, bearing in mind everything else I've got to be doing. So... It's, it's just to urge a degree of caution about what it is specifically that you might want to get into as this debate goes on, bearing in mind that you're going to have to go into the scoping exercise as well. So if it's a whole wide ranging issue, honestly, I think the councillors should be going to the standards committee and saying these are our concerns and picking it up there rather than necessarily scrutiny doing it. But you know, part of that's a plea for me, um, just a, a plea for sort of a degree of reasonableness about what it is the committee actually specifically wants to get into. Uh, in relation to standards, because as I say, the whole gambit seems to be open at the moment. All right. Um, Councillor Mike Allen. Yeah, thank you for letting me come back in, Chair. I mean, I did uh, send to you a uh, suggested uh, standards scope. Do you mind if I just read it? As long as it's not too long. No. Uh, Recommended terms of reference for our, our review should be to examine the structures, processes and practices of East Devon Council, East Devon District Council regarding the most significant threats to ethical standards, the maintaining of codes of conduct for local councillors and senior officers, the procedures for investigating alleged breaches fairly and with due process, the ways of enforcing codes and imposing sanctions for misconduct, the procedures for declaring interests and managing conflicts of interest, including between SMT and councillors, the procedures for whistleblowing, and any evidence of intimidation of councillors or officers, and make recommendations for any measures that could be put in place to prevent and address such intimidation. Point two, 
to assess whether the existing structures, processes and practices for regulating ethical standards are robust, effective and conducive to high standards required of conduct in local government. And thirdly, to make any recommendations for how they can be improved. Now, if, if I uh, say, uh, suggest that if anybody doesn't want this to proceed, one of the first things they will do is recommend an alternative procedure that takes it away from this committee. And the second thing is that they will say there's too much work involved and it's too difficult and it'll take too long. Those are standard things that have been uh, used in the past. In fact, the same arguments were uh, used over the recommendation that scrutiny should look at poverty. And the uh, same process was used to defer the uh, discussion of scrutiny about economic development to send it, in fact, originally to overview, but it ended up in cabinet. As far as I'm concerned, scrutiny needs to look at this particular topic and look at it carefully and independently of the standards committee itself. There is no legitimate legal constitutional reason that we cannot look at it. And it would be very wise for transparency reasons that we do. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Right, we've got lots of committee members hands up, but the, I, I will take the last councillor who's got his hand up, which is Councillor Andrew Moulding. Yes, uh, Chair, thank you, as, as Councillor Allen said, for letting me come back and speak again. And I listened carefully to Henry Gordon Lennox, and, um, uh, and he says quite rightly that there will be a lot of work involved in preparing a submission that scrutiny wants to consider. Uh, but likewise would be exactly the same in preparing a report for standards committee. You have to look at the whole matter of standards and it, the, the length and breadth of the debate that they have to undertake at their meetings. Now, if it takes a long time, and I quite understand, it's very unlikely that uh, Henry will be able to prepare uh, a, a full report and uh, investigation for scrutiny to undertake in time for the next standards committee. That doesn't matter. We have to get it right. And to get it right, I think scrutiny needs to have the opportunity to put forward its various suggestions so that standards can then consider it. Now, if that takes until the next full council meeting in May, then so be it. But we need this work to be done properly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Moulding. I said I wouldn't take anybody else, but being fair to everybody, I will take Councillor Arnott to give him the opportunity to come back as well. And then we go to the members of the, of the committee. I'm really grateful to you, Chair, for that, and, and uh, really am. I just wanted to come in with a little bit of uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 7. Uh, there'll be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. So I'd just like to welcome here the extraordinary new enthusiasm of the Conservative group for scrutinising the standards process after a number of years in which they didn't. Um, but also, quite seriously, to endorse more or less everything that Mike Allen, Councillor Allen, has said there about the potential scope. Uh, it's absolutely n none of my business at all about um, whether this is duplicating work of the Standards Committee or not. And thank you to Mr. Gordon Lennox for correcting me about the idea of the Standards uh, Assessment Subcommittee, which, which is an idea that seems to be coming through standards. So it's obviously a matter for your judgment about whether you're, you're, you're duplicating uh, work or not. But as far as what Councillor Allen has said in terms of the type of analysis that should be done, um, personally, I, I would agree with it thoroughly. Thank you for allowing me, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Arnott. Um, and, and in reply to him saying about um, scrutiny, I mean, the Conservatives have never had a chair of scrutiny before. So we haven't been able to bring things forward like this. It's been other people that have had the opportunity. You always had a majority on the committee, though, Chair. <laughs> 
Right, now we'll go to the committee. Um, the first hand I can see up is uh, Kent, Councillor Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to give a bit of background on this, really, as the uh, Chair of the Audit and Governance Committee. This originally came to me as a request for ANG to look at. I appreciate I'm probably the only person who bothers to read the terms of reference for ANG, but didn't feel that it had the cap capability under those references to be able to um, look at this matter. So my gut reaction was it's a scrutiny matter, it goes there. But my audit background is, as I think it's already mentioned, you don't mark your own homework. And it didn't fully sit right saying, the person being asked to, or the committee being asked to review itself. Hence why I sort of made the recommendation that maybe scrutiny could consider this in lieu of standards looking at themselves, if that makes sense. Yes. Hence Thank why, you. why we're here today. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Councillor Ollie Davey. Thank you, Chair. Um, Right, I'm just going to run through a few things. I heard a proposal to add a requirement to have a DBS to the seven principles. I mean, I, I feel a requirement to have a DBS is something very specific um, and hardly a principle. Um, and I think it's rather um, kind of muddying the waters to put something quite so um, specific there. As far as I know, there's no legal requirement for councillors to hold a DBS. As it happens, I have. Um, and the only reason I've got DBS is because um, I was a guitar teacher where there absolutely was a requirement for me to have DBS um, because I was going into schools and working sometimes one-to-one -one with individual children. So it was absolutely right and proper. And the school wouldn't have let me through the door without one. But I'm not quite sure why, as a counsellor, you're required to have DBS. Um, and um, so I, I would certainly not be in favour of adding that to any kind of list of principles. Um, it's been suggested by Councillor Allen that uh, some complaints are politically motivated. I, I wonder how you decide on the motivation for a complaint. I mean, you just investigate the complaint and you may decide it's baseless and that maybe um, there was some malicious intent behind it. But, but I don't think you can decide whether a complaint is politically motivated until you've investigated it. It's also been suggested that the, there's some kind of political bias on standards. Well, I think as councillors, we all accept that we are here to carry out our duties fairly and uh, without um, any kind of bias uh, towards any particular viewpoint. We have our own views. Um, and while we may uh, group together with other councillors who share those views, we are ultimately going to take our own view on things. So the suggestion that there's some kind of political bias on standards, I, I think is a bit of a slur on the integrity of councillors. And I think I would, I would, I hope, um, be absolutely impartial. Um, and if I was on standards committee, which I'm not, um, in looking at a case uh, and, and dealing with that on its merits and regardless of who the, uh, the person was or what their political leaning was. Um, and uh, as far as reviewing the, uh, the structures, processes and practices, I think I heard, of the Standards Committee, um, if that's an appropriate function for scrutiny, then um, yes, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Thank you. I mean, with, with, with regards to the D, DBS, we can discuss it and then decide whether it should be recommended to council. I mean, we're not deciding that today. It's um, something for discussion at a later stage. Thank you. Um, the next person is uh, Councillor Tony McCullum. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, this is really for the records, really. Um, perhaps I should have declared a declaration of interest in this one as I possibly got some issues going through Standards Committee currently. Thank you. Um, Councillor Vale Ranger. Thank you. So, um, looking back, um, when I first um, started to attend um, as a member of the public, um, East End District Council meetings in the chamber 
Uh, I remember the days when members of the public were jeered and hollered at and uh, councillors stamped their feet and slapped the desk and sometimes officers were rude to members of the public, sometimes uh, councillors were, the chairman, the leader. I do recall at one point phoning the um, Conservative office in London to make a complaint and I said there were three councillors and I offered up two names and I said I don't actually remember um, I didn't know the name of the third councillor and the Conservative office in London offered me a name uh, which surprised me it surprised me to hear that the Conservative office in London were well aware of, of um, allegations about a councillor uh, all the way up there in London um, as it happened on that occasion it wasn't that person but um, you know that that person did have a very good and well-known reputation for bullying. Um, so historically, too often, this was put down to the rough and tumble of politics. And I think um, anybody that's followed it, I know a lot of you have followed it for a lot longer, but certainly um, in the chamber, um, you know, behavior over the seven years has improved immensely um, in terms of, you know, the public perception and how the public are treated. Um, as far as an external person to assess complaints, I remember wondering how independent the independent person was when the independent person was selected by persons unknown to me at um, East Devon District Council. And, um, you know, I remember feeling how strange it was that this unknown independent person selected and chosen uh, by East Devon District Council was uh, supposedly judging me in an impartial way. I, I wasn't sure about that. Um, I totally, just jumping around a little bit, I totally agree with um, Mike Allen's, um, Councillor Allen's um, scoping and, and all the points that he's mentioned there. Um, and of course, historically, we know we, we tried bringing some planning issues to um, scrutiny before and, and that was, um, well, we were told, oh, absolutely, you absolutely cannot do that. Even though all the training we had from the LGA and all the external training that, that we attended through East Devon District Council, we were told scrutiny absolutely can look at anything they like. But, you know, historically we had stuff um, pushed away. So, you know, I'm certainly very open um, to uh, standards being looked at um, other points was I going to make? Oh, just the DBS thing. I mean, I just despair. Whenever we've discussed it, half the councillors already have a DBS. Um, some people clearly didn't understand it. Some, some councillors said, oh, I was really surprised I passed my DBS, like it was some sort of a test. Um, and of course, anybody who has uh, been around um, sex offenders knows how cunning and devious they are. And actually having a DBS certificate is absolutely no insurance whatsoever that that people are safe. It's just, um, I think many, many times, it's just a covering your back type of an issue. So um, yes, I don't, I'm not sure um, if it needs to be looked at at scrutiny or if we should wait um, and see what the standards committee, if it, if it can put its own house in order uh, in terms of having confidence um, in the decisions that they make? Is it politically driven? Well, you know, who, who are you going to really believe is totally impartial? Um, if historically you've always been very partisan and, and always trusted, you know, your, your own party and, and have no trust in anybody else simply because they're not a member of your party. I don't know how you get over that, but certainly that's historically, um, we've seen that. We've seen voting like sheep historically on some really appalling matters at East Devon District Council. Um, so that's my, those are my views. I think it's, it is time standards was looked at um, thoroughly. Um, I'm not sure, I, I can understand why people think it should be scrutiny, but I, I, you know, it seems to me if the work has already started and begun at standards, perhaps we should carry on down that route and attend perhaps perhaps they could bring a report to scrutiny on, on where they're at and um, what we think about it. Perhaps it could be, um, you know, dealt with in that way. And if we're still not happy, then um, take, it, take it on from there. 
Um, but certainly it needs, I think the, the scrutiny needs to be done either here or, or at the standards committee um, as, soon as, as soon as possible. Thank you. Um, Councillor Maddie Chapman. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, like Councillor Ranger, I've been on scrutiny for many years and done an awful lot of training. And I like to think that I am not political um, when I'm scrutinising something. Um, and I do agree with a lot of the scoping uh, that Mike has put forward. However, what I would like to look at with the standards is what is brought to standards and when it is brought. Um, and therefore, maybe this is something for the leader because um, I know he doesn't want to go back on things and things have been done and it's been dealt with. But really and truly, um, a councillor who um, has not been well um, and has been under pressure um, and three months ago um, it was um, East Devon was notified that there was problems um, and nobody took it on and it should really have been taken to standards um, that this councillor was having problems. Um, now you know so when it comes to standards what is actually brought um, is down to the monitoring officer but there are a lot of other issues as well that could have been addressed um, a lot earlier um, and saved a lot of grief and a lot upset, of upset. Well, can can I just stop people. you there for a second, Maddie? We're not talking about particular cancer in this. No, We're talking I know. Of, what, I'm talking about... is, what I'm saying is I would like to look at um, when things are brought to standards, um, I want to know why certain things when they happen aren't put to standards when they should quite clearly have been put to standards before um, and so I don't know the criteria of this so therefore I would like to look at the way standards works more so that I can understand when something happens um, that it isn't taken to standards um, and what is um, you know, what is the criteria? You know, how far do you go before you have to go to standards? Um, this is my problem. That's why I think scrutiny should look at, uh, scope it um, and have a look and see um, what we should be doing um, so we don't get ourselves in any, you know, anyone gets into a mess, you know? Yeah. Basically, that's what I'm saying, Chair. Right, thank you very much. I know we've got the last, blue hand up and see raised is uh, Councillor Helen Powell. Thank you and I would like to ask Henry, I'm looking at your comments Henry and the last section in your comments um, says that um, you consider it be most appropriate for concerns to be fed into the process currently being undertaken by the Standards Committee. Um, can you say how we do that and at what point? Can you just explain what our role could be, please? Henry, would you like yes, to? Yes, I agree. Sure. Every time I get that, I always have to try and fumble to find the mute, the mute button. Um, may I just address something that Councillor Chapman was, was saying? So I, I wonder whether there's a slight misconception about the process. Um, fundamentally, any complaint that is made, I assess at first instance uh, as to whether it, it goes forward for investigation, assuming that there is sufficient, well, there's a few tests that, that it has to pass, but assuming it passes those and goes forward, I then have to assess in consultation with the independent person, but in liaison with the complainant, the subject member and any witnesses, whether or not there has been a breach. If there has been a breach, sorry, if I find no breach, that's the end of the matter. If there is a breach, then um, it's open to me to seek to resolve it with the subject member um, so that for example, giving an apology or whatever it might be, can bring the matter to a conclusion. If the subject member is happy with that, then that's the end of the process. But fundamentally, if the subject member is not happy with the outcome, then it's referred to independent investigation, um, where there is a, 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 an outside person looking in and reviewing it. That report comes back, and if that report says there's no breach, then that's the end of the matter. 
If that report says there's a breach, then I have a further opportunity to seek to resolve it with the subject member. And fundamentally, it's only if I can't resolve it with the subject member throughout to the end of that process that it then comes forward to, to the standards committee. Um, and I think probably since around 2013, I think there's only been three subcommittees. So in a sense, actually, that's a fairly good, I would say, indictment that actually the process is working in the sense that you can get to an outcome. Now, I know that that doesn't necessarily cover it from, a, from another perspective of um, uh, sort of that transparency oversight bit. But anyway, that's for, that's for another day. But that's the process, Councillor Chapman, that explains how it might end up at the subcommittee. To answer Thank the you, Councillor, Henry. There is. To answer, answer Councillor Parr's point, um, Yes, well, I'm, what I really meant by that last line was that the members could, could attend the standards committee and have, the, have their views. Uh, if scrutiny is going to progress this, and I, you know, I, that, if that's the decision, then that's the decision. But I, I really would um, say that it needs to go through the scoping exercise so that not least I'm clear what it is that I'm writing a report because Councillor Allen's scoping is frankly the whole lot. I mean, it is everything uh, and, and more. And that's fine, but that is going to take me a lot of time. And... Um, just going back to the timing, I appreciate Councillor Moulding has said, you know, okay, not such an issue, but even getting what Councillor Allen is asking through for, in front of May is, is, is uh, possibly going to be unlikely. But, but be that as it may, whatever goes through to the scoping um, can feed into the Standards Committee process, but the Standards Committee itself is then going to have to accept that it will potentially need to hold back its review um, to enable the twin track of the committee's consideration of the items. And that's all fine. There's no problem with it. But what you will find is that this will drag on. And um, if, if the intention, and I guess there seems to be a collective will that this is reviewed ahead of May and whatever decision um, uh, outcome is desirable for the council will be taken at May. That's fine too. But you're asking for quite a lot of work across two committees to refine all of this and for each committee to be hearing what the other committee is saying and for it all to come to fruition by May. Um, so I, I, I would, you know, I get the sense of where this will go. My, my, my request will be that in the scoping exercise, you do look to hone it a bit more. I mean, frankly, if you read the process that's there, you will understand what the current process is. And then you can say, well, is this acceptable or, or unacceptable? So I think the scoping exercise will allow you to, to, to hone what it is that you're asking me to do um, so that you can then have the meaningful engagement piece. But Either you choose to go to the standards committee and engage that way, or scrutiny itself could do, undertake some work and ask for that to be fed into standards, because really it is for standards to make the recommendation to council, because um, that's where the authority has been delegated to in terms of the standards process. But it's perfectly permissible for standards to take on the, uh, and to hear the views of scrutiny if that's if that's what you want to do. But you know, it, it's just how far do you want this um, this exercise to go, and how meaningful it will be in the time frame that's available. So there's a few com competing balances to, to draw out there, I think. Thank you. Um, we've got no other speakers on that. Oh, uh, no, no other speakers. Um, have we got a recommendation for it to go out to scoping in a seconder? Is there? No one wants to take it forward? Looks like a no, Chair. Yes, is that a no from everybody? Andrew? I can't. It's not up to me to put it forward. I'm not no. on the committee. No, I know. I thought you was waving your hands. That was all. Um, we've got um, a proposer from Maddie Chapman, is it, and a seconder from Ian Chubb? Uh, no, Chairman. I would like to know um, if we could see, um, have a report um, or some idea from standards um, on what they were looking at. Um, and what they were thinking of doing before we sort of go down the, this long route. But right. that's just my personal point of view. Yeah, and we've got Councillor Ian Chubb's got his hand raised. Well, I'm happy to propose it if there is a seconder there. Right. Um, we've got Councillor King got his hand raised as well. I second that. Right. Well, we do have a proposal in a seconder. 
would you like to go to the vote and raise your red hand if you're in agreement with it? Sorry, Chairman. Can yeah. I just ask what the proposal is? Yes. Yes. Thank you. That we um, get this down again. Um, well, the proposal is that we we go out to have it scoped and in a general form, and then it can come back to us, and we can then decide what parts we want to take forward. No, no, no. So, Chair, just to confirm, to bring the matter back to scrutiny for scoping. Yes. Is that is that fine with the proposer, Councillor Chubb? Um, Chairman. Yeah, that's yes. fine with me. Yeah, I beg your pardon. Um, I'm confused. I thought that we were going to go to standards to find out what it was that they were doing, and that then we would consider. Um, how to fit in with that, whether to follow or whatever. And uh, this was mentioned just before uh, and proposed, and that is what I was seconding. Right. Yeah. So that was, Chair, if I may, that was Councillor Chapman, but I don't think Councillor Chapman was proposing that. I think that was just her, her point of view. Well, yes. then I was endorsing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, The King was proposing that. I would second Councillor King's proposal. I propose it. I second it. Thank you. All right. right. Okay, we so, that so we then a... don't have a second of Councillor Chubb. Because Councillor King was, was... Is that an amendment or, or what? So we have wait, Councillor wait, wait. Chubb's proposal was not seconded. Right. Because Councillor King was erroneously held to be seconding it but wasn't because he was agreeing with councillor chapman that councillor ranger yeah. has now yeah too late so in the got, evening for this <laughs> yeah right can we have the proposal that's been seconded so that is councillor ranger's proposal that if i paraphrase and she can correct me is that you await the response of the standards committee to their consideration of the amendments or consideration of the process mm -hmm. and then for scrutiny to consider the matter further. That's that's the gist that I understood. Yes. Very good. Councillor Ranger, is that yes. correct? Yes, I'd be happy with that. Good. Councillor King? Yes, I'm happy with that. And I, yes. Either, I either, yes, I either propose it or second it. I'm not quite sure which. Right. We've got a proposal in a second. Can we have a vote on it by raising your blue hands if you're in agreement? Or a tick. So, oh, so green, uh, green sorry. ticks, green, green ticks. Green for a tick, sorry. Green ticks if you're in favour. Yeah. Red crosses if you're against, and blue if you blue hands if you wish to abstain. Yeah. So for those watching online, the vote is now taking place. Chair, there are 10 green ticks votes for yes and one blue hand for abstention. Right, thank you. Well, that motion is carried then. Um, right, the next thing on the, um, on the agenda was the five-year land supply. I mean, now that we've left GESP and you've got the government white paper coming out, I think it's a matter that we do check to make sure that we've got some defence in a five-year land supply. Um, so would councillors like to make a comment on that? Um, we've got Councillor Dan Ledger, the first one I can see. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just kind of confused at what scrutiny would be scrutinising in this. I kind of have to agree with uh, the monitoring officer's comment. This was only came to uh, Strategic Planning Committee 16 days ago, where the monitoring report looked at the five-year land supply. Um, it, the committee noted that we had a sufficient five-year land supply, and it looked at the implications of COVID on that five-year land supply. Um, so in light of that, I can't really understand what scrutiny would be looking for 
or too scrutinised, the the strategic planning committee did didn't do sixteen days ago. Thank you, Thank you very much, okay, Councillor Arnott. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Ledger has put this so much better than I could have done, so I, I won't add much other than just for information to say that uh, he and I and the CEO and the strategic lead for planning, Mr. Freeman, uh, meet with the equivalents um, for the former guest authorities tomorrow at one to discuss about how we go forward with a, a with other with with strategies um, that were included obviously within the former guest but excluding site allocation. That's just for information. But other than that, Chair, yes, just to warmly endorse what Councillor Ledger has just said, and I suppose to say. Um, I think somebody, Councillor Ranger, mentioned this earlier. For many, many years, councillors were very keen to bring in planning issues into scrutiny and uh, were very specifically told <laughs> we couldn't do it. Um, but again, that's historical, probably. Um, Councillor Moulding. Uh, yes, Chair. Um, I think, um, I mean, I'm on the strategic planning committee but at the same time i would welcome some independent independent views yet again from members of scrutiny this is such an important issue and we all know now we we have a white paper that's um being debated just at the minute we also have uh, a series of new and um and considerable uh, significant uh, matters of, of planning regulation changes that again need to be considered. Uh, strategic planning will be having a report, no doubt, but I think at this critical time we need to uh, look at the white paper, look at the changes in planning um, regulations and consider how we can best feed our independent views into the strategic planning committee. Thank you. There's no other councillor's hands raised, so we go to the committee. Uh, Councillor Oli Davy. Thank you. Uh, yes, as a member of SPC, uh, we did look at this, as Councillor Ledger said, 16 days ago. We had a report that looked at various scenarios, and I'm really not quite sure what uh, we would do as a scrutiny committee on the land supply, apart from ask Ed Freedom, Freeman for another report, um, which he's, he's already done. So um, I cannot see, un unless we're all experts on uh, five-year land supply issues, I, I don't see that we are going to be able to uh, do any better than the officers in um, assessing what our uh, availability of land is. Thank you. Councillor Ranger. Yes, sorry. I, I'm wondering if it's possible to ask uh, Councillor Ledger. Um, I, I seem to recall that um, in, the, in the white paper, um, there was not so much focus on the, the traditional five-year, you know, what we've come to know as the five-year land supply. And it, and it was more about um, land coming forward and, and developments actually happening rather than sort of um, banking, banking this this supply that that may or may not um, come to fruition. I don't know if um, Councillor Ledger feels able um, to comment on that, or if I'm misremembering what I've read. Was that clear? Sorry, Councillor Ledger. Was that clear what I was asking? Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely clear. I was sorry. I was waiting for the chair just to call me in. I'm trying to be polite. Um, I think there's. With it, within the planning white paper, it is just a planning white paper at the moment. So there are so many hypotheticals and until the government comes through with more concrete direction of what they're going to do, we're just making assumptions. Um, and that's what brings me back to with the, the five year land supply with regards to the report that was received 16 days ago. What else are we going to scrutinize the we haven't done it strategic planning. We've given our comments for um, the white paper. We've given our comments for the monitoring of the five-year land supply. So it's what additionally can your scrutiny bring? Um, and that's what I'm struggling to see. I'm more than happy and I welcome 
all forms of scrutiny. It's just what can you as individuals add to the process that hasn't already been added? Thank you. Thank you. Councillor King. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've been puzzled by, by this because um, I, I think the question I want an answer to is, is why has this been brought before scrutiny? Uh, we have item for consideration and then we have expected outcome as if that's the answer. Um, and it's, it's a bit foggy, frankly. Um, but then I realized that I felt the same with the last item that was put forward uh, that we've discussed over the last 10 minutes, quarter of an hour. And um, perhaps there's a, a piece missing on the form, uh, to cru put it crudely, perhaps there should be an item which is why or what purpose, um, just to give a clue as to what it is that's going to be discussed. That would help with the scoping, which was deficient in the last one. Um, but uh, you may want to put this down to me being a bit of a novice in this matter. I, I have tried racking my brains, but it, it hurts now, so I've stopped. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. I mean, it, it, it was put forward to make sure we can defend ourselves um, against government and developers um, that we have got a sufficient land supply and people are not going to come in under the wire, so to speak. Yes, I do understand that as being a general purpose of land supply. Yes, I was wondering yeah. why it should come under scrutiny. Well, as in the past. Oh, right. Have it. Right. Uh, good. Councillor Ranger. Just to say, I, I agree, really. It, it, we just seem to be duplicating what, what has happened. I'm, I'm looking at all the, um, all, all the rationale, um, why it's an urgent issue and, it, and it's come here and it just seems to have been looked at most recently. It just seems to be a, a duplication um, to me. Yeah, well, this probably, this came in before um, the other things were discussed. So, as we've got no other speakers, um, well, we won't get a recommendation for this. We'll have to put it on the back boiler and, um, and see what, what transforms with it. Um, there's no other forward plans. There's no other forms come in. It seems like nobody's got an interest in doing things, but it'd be nice to have some forms brought forward. Um, that's everything, I think, isn't it, on this um, on this agenda? So I'll um, I'll bring this meeting to a close. And um, I would like to thank everyone, including members of the public watching online and for taking part. However, I can just remind those present and the supporting officers will confirm when the meeting is no longer being recorded or going live. And until then, your comments will be made public. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.